DreamHack Open is brought to you by Corsair, Monster Energy, Esport Management, and GG Bet. Open. We are coming to you live from Tour in France's beautiful Loire Valley. Yes, ooh la la. The prize pool today is a whopping 100,000 US dollars, and our eight teams will be competing for the lion's share. That's a whopping 50k, and of course, they'll be taking home that shiny, shiny trophy. It doubles up as a mirror, don't you know? Pull a visage. Bonjour, my name is Frankie Ward. Welcome to the show. And of course, we wouldn't be here without our fabulous sponsors. They are Esports Management, Corsair, and Monster Energy. And yeah, you can probably tell I've had a few of those already. I'm so excited to be here, and I'm full of bubbles, and I'm not just on my own, because easing me into my first ever DreamHack opener is the fabulous Potter and Blair. Blair, you were here last year in tours. I was, and it's great to be back. What did you like most about the country and the region? The wine, the food, the baguettes, the and of wine. course the Counter-Strike. You're a bit obsessed with baguettes, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah, are you more of a garlic woman, Potter? I am, I am. <laughs> I'm actually so impressed with the, uh, with the kebab here. I had it yesterday. It was so good, actually. I wanted to go back for a second serving, but I did not. Well, speaking about kebab, that's something that's quite <laughs> popular in Canada. And because we didn't want to bring a baguette on stage, for some reason, we're going French-Canadian. And that is why we have got a bottle of champagne. This is French. We're not allowed to drink this, apparently, though. I'm not sure when. Why? They're going to keep us in suspense. Apparently, we'll find out soon. We've got to deserve this. We've got to earn it. <laughs> but also, je me présente. I just said I present myself. That's not very good French. I apologize. Just to be désolé. We have got a fabulous Celine Dion French language album. Un peu de nous, which means a bit of us, I believe, but correct me if I'm wrong, chat, please. And it's got some fabulous songs, of course. It's Celine Dion. What would you expect? Celine Dion. Dans un autre monde, which I think means in another world, in a different world. Terre, which means Earth. And then l'étoile, which means the star. Although, apparently, okay. if you were to call yourself a star, you would just say, je suis un star. Uh, but that's not me, clearly. <laughs> clearly, but that is you, Blair. So I want to see <laughs> if you guys can translate this, okay? Okay. Okay. Potter, the first one for you. Je sais pas. My name is? Blair, do you want to try? <laughs> no. No, okay, right. Well, you know what? That means, that means I don't know. Je sais ah. pas. I don't know, but I'm going to actually get you to, to try and read one out, okay? I'm going to say, right, this one. Okay, n uh, number three. Trois. <laughs> Uh, tous les blues. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, I, think, I think that's a wrap with the, <laughs> with the blues, French. Tous les blues. Tous les blues, yeah. Like all this, oh, I guess that means all the sadness. And then, it, it's a shame it wasn't tous les bleus. And then I'm going to get you to read out, you know what? We're going we're gonna to get you to say uh, number 11 on CD de. Number 11. Encore en soi? Oh, that was good well, accent. Was what do you think that means? Uh, repeat again? Love me again? I don't that, know. That's not bad. Encore. So uh, that's kind of yeah, like another. Yeah. Another evening. Encore oh. soir. I think that. I, again, I could be wrong. I love that I get to be the one who knows French when I know nothing. Like we feel so <laughs> useless right now. Rien. <laughs> Your Wait. French is actually really good. Yeah. It's it's Thank really you. good. Yeah. It turns out though we're not here for language lessons. <laughs> we're here for Counter Strike. So let's take a look at the groups. We've got eight teams. Six of them were directly invited. Two of them came from a French and a European qualifier, respectively. Any standout names for you there? This is probably a silly question, Potter. The standout name is DreamHack Open 2019. That is actually <laughs> a lovely. 
because uh, I do believe that is uh, French frogs. French frogs, don't, yeah. But don't have a logo, which is so unfortunate. You can just put a, put Pepe over there, and I think it'd be great. Put I a mean, frog, yeah. I mean, it's not Overwatch. Holding a baguette. Yeah, it's not Overwatch. You can definitely have it over there. It's Counter-Strike. <laughs> no one really cares. But yeah, standout names, Frankie. I'd say it's Mouseports, obviously, over there. But then again, G2, they've been looking really solid of late. They definitely have, and oh man, I was so excited for Ghost Gaming, actually, but unfortunately, we've got the news about their fifth, and I was so devastated last night. I was so ready to, to root on the North American team, and not only that, but they looked so good leading up to this tournament, and now and they don't have their fifth. They don't have Freakazoid, yeah. do they? I don't know why you don't sub in for them, <laughs> to be quite I honest. I should, I really you should. should. <laughs> you should. They, they should pay you handsomely. Now, we need to take a look at the bracket for Group A, so we can see what is coming up, who's going to be facing who, and of course, our front runners, Mouse, they're going to be facing Instinct, who came through the French qualifiers, and we'll be talking about them shortly. And we've got Windigo versus Valiance. They're going to be coming up. They're the third match of the day, and that is going to be a really close one, isn't it, Blur? Yeah, it is indeed. Like, Windigo and Valiance, if you look at this particular group, right, you're obviously going to expect Mouse to come out of the group uh, without dropping a single map, to be very honest. Uh, unfortunately, for Instinct, I don't want to sound like a party pooper here, but they're going to have a very rough time. Windigo and Valiance, now who's going to come out? That's going to be a, that's going to be a bond burner for game, so to speak. And if you look at all the games we have lined up today, I think that game in particular might be really, really close. Well, let's talk about our first best of one. We're going to be kicking it off with three reasons from Potter. All right, so the three reasons that I've chosen uh, is why Mouse should win. And reason number one is Kerrigan is one of the best IGLs that we have around. I mean, he's been an in-game leader for so many years. He was the in-game leader for TSM, FaZe, and Australis, and had a lot of success over there. And reason number two is Rops has been on fire. I mean, this guy, ever since Sunny departure and Oscar's departure. He's been finding his form and really performing in the server. And reason number three is this lineup, they need results, specifically at tournaments like DreamHack Open, where the tier of the team list is, is a little lower. And uh, yeah, they're definitely going to need results to showcase for the lineup that they have. But Blair, what if they don't get the results this weekend? Oh, that's going to be a big shocker, mm -hmm. right? And it's going to be a lot of questions being raised. But the thing is, like, just touching upon what you mentioned, Potter, about Carrigan, he has this great run of this, uh, you know, the uh, some people call it the honeymoon period with his teams, right? When he just gets joins a new team, they just look phenomenal. And right now, Mouse Sports are in the honeymoon period right now. They're looking great. I'll be honest, when I saw Walksick and Chris J, two primary offers in the team initially, I'm like, mm, is it really going to work out? But having seen them play, I think, I have no doubts in my mind that they're going to be uh, at least coming out from the groups into the playoffs. Well, let's take a look at the map vetoes. We were having a little bit of a discussion backstage. Before we see them, who do you think it's, well, who, what map do you think it's going to be? All the maps of personalities, it turns out. Which map are we thinking, Blair? I know you had some opinions. Uh, yeah, I think no one's really going to go for anything crazy. It's going to be a kind of like a middle of the map, uh, middle of the ground map pick, so to speak. That's what we usually see in best of ones, right? I'm just looking at my notes here. I, I know for a fact we're not going to be seeing Vertigo. No one wants to play that map, especially in the best of one. And if you look at the the way the maps are, both these teams, they kind of like, it works for each other. Like if you look at the ma maps that Instinct like to play, Mouse don't really like to play those maps. So I think it's going to come down between Overpass and Inferno. I do believe Inferno might be the final map coming in here. If I'm Instinct, you know, I'm pushing for the nuke or Vertigo to be honest. I know it's a best of one, but that, that's where you can really capitalize on these maps. Uh, Mouse Sports is a newer team, and they're putting a lot of focus on the main maps that, that they want to play, but they haven't been able to cover all of them. And so if I'm Instinct, I'm definitely pushing for Overpass, Nuke, or Vertigo. But we've only seen Mouse play Nuke once with this iteration, mm -hmm. and it didn't go well. They played it against NIP earlier this week, and they had a phenomenal T side, we have to say. They, they had 10 rounds, and then their CT side, only three rounds. And actually, on their CT side, surely they should be doing better than that. The thing about Nuke and CT side is it takes a lot of cohesion within the team. And for newer teams, specifically Kerrigan, they're going to put a lot of their focus on the T side. CT side is very individual based and it takes a lot of time to gr create and build synergy so that you understand what your mates are doing across the map. And you don't really have to think about it. It's more natural. It's just reacting and being proactive. But yeah, CT side of Nuke is definitely one of the harder maps to be dominant on, on such a CT sided map, specifically because it just takes time. And Blair, we've seen you were right, Inferno. I was a little surprised with the final two bans, though. It was mm. Mouse banning out Overpass, and it was Nuke getting banned by uh, by our boys over at Instinct, which is a little surprising. I thought it'd be the other way around, that Mouse would go for the Nuke ban earlier on, considering the results you just spoke about right now. But yeah, Inferno is going to be, and I'm, I'm really going to give the edge to uh, to Mouse Sports here. They have the right elements. Like, if you look at them play Inferno, if you look at the way, you know, when they have the dual op setup going for them, and they're a team, if you give them two ops, they're definitely going to keep wielding that time and time again. You have Chris J, you got Walksick. One that over the A bomb site, one over the B bomb site. It's going 
going to be a nightmare for Instinct. Again, they're kind of a mixed team. They're kind of a very new team. And if you're going to try and break Mouseport's defense, you need to have that cohesion. You need to have the timings right. You need to get a utility usage. Everything's got to be right. But if you look at the way Mouseport's played a CD side, it's pure aggression. It's just, you know, poking and prodding, making you feel very uncomfortable. And especially if you're a new team, if you're a new lineup, or rather, I mean, they're not really a new team, but they've known each other for a while. But if you don't have the cohesion going for you, you're going to get just like destroyed in the server. Talking of uncomfortable, Carrigan looked at a little bit at the end of last year, didn't he? And maybe even at the beginning of this year with Envy, it didn't quite click, it didn't work out. And it was a shame because he only spent a short bit of time on that roster. He didn't really get to do much with it. But now he's doing so much with Mouse. Is Carrigan back, Potter? I, you know, I think so. I really like this project that he has. I mean, the players that, that he has with it and the, the results speak for themselves. They've been on the rise. And I think we're going to keep seeing that upward trajectory for this lineup for, for the time being, at least for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if you look at, and look, you can see him just staring into <laughs> everyone's souls as he does. That's kind of <laughs> impressive how he just doesn't blink at all. Will he blink this time, though? That's the question. Let's see. I think that's that terrifying. Mouse are going to be sponsored by eye drops very, very soon. <laughs> by eye drops. <laughs> I'm that so jealous of his skin, man. He's so glowy. No. Oh, we lost. The cameraman lost. The camera lost to Kerrigan Alpha, the, the cameraman, just now. But speaking of Alpha, we have Chris J. <laughs> Yeah, perennial Mouseports member, and he is definitely going to be a player to watch here. I know we have Woxic as well, but Chris J, he's been really, really looking good. Woxic getting picked up. This was a surprise pick for me when they got him from Hellraiser. I was like, is it really going to fit into this lineup, right? He's definitely a very capable player, but you're like, does he really work with this lineup? And Carrigan has proven that he can. For sure, and Kerrigan is known for that, right? Is being able to find talent and, and placing them in the right places and, and really capitalizing on the on the utility that he has in his players. And we've got Frozen on the screen. He's another 16-year-old player within this tournament. The second one, we've got Neptune over on Ghost Gaming. But yeah, I mean, Frozen has always been kind of within the discussions of up-and-comers and for, for the past several years, but he's been so young. He's been so young, so people haven't really been able to to see what he's been capable of. And so it's pretty exciting that he's here now on this lineup. And of course, we have the best known player in this entire land. It is Rob aka Robin, Robin Cool. And why do you think we're suddenly seeing a change in Robin? Is it the, the guidance of Carrigan letting him be? You know, that's probably plays a, such a huge factor, a huge role in his success, but also, Sonny and Oscar were superstar talents within this lineup. And so with their departure, I think Robs has probably got a little bit more of the veteran status. He's one of the original members now, and he's got new teammates coming in. And so that kind of gives you a little bit more freedom, a little bit more room to, to work with for yourself and, and find yourself within the within the server. And I think that's what is showing Robs' success. Well, we do think the Mouse are probably going to take Inferno, but Instinct, they're going to be fighting, right, Blair? They are going to be fighting indeed. I mean, the French aren't really known for surrendering after all, right? And uh, if you look at if you look at his players, you know most of these guys, right? Like a Matt Hen, he is kind of like the newer player in this lineup. Not many people who don't follow like some of the more tier two, tier three scenes in EU probably wouldn't know him. But if you look at the rest of the players, we got Tuanu, we got Devil, Devil Devek, Fuchs. I love that name as well. I mean, these are known players. They played with uh, with a number of you know the stars in the French scene. Uh, obviously, they are ex LDLT as well. They have obviously played existence, so. When they, were play when they played with Existence, it looked like they, they knew what they were doing, right? They were following a game plan. And obviously, even though he's not there in the lineup anymore, I'm sure that's carried over. And they did win the, the French qualifiers, if I'm not mistaken, to make it here. So it's not like they're exactly pushovers either. I think they might put up a fight, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. They did. And actually, Matt Hen, he's actually been the original uh, common factor within this lineup all the way dating back since 2016. But Every single one of these players have been on this roster at one point or another mm -hmm. since 2016. And so even though they are a new team, they're definitely a team that's familiar with each other. They've played with each other a long time throughout the years. I mean, Devil, he's been a part of this lineup in and out <laughs> consistently over the past several years. But, um, but yeah, I think even though they're a new team, we should be seeing some familiar, some familiar plays from them that, that we saw from LDLC back in the day. My question is, are they going to take any risks against Mouse? Because I was having a chat to Maynak, he knows these boys quite well, and he says that Devil likes to play slightly awkward, slightly risky strategies. Like, if they've got enough to get a full buy, they might just buy Kevlar, buy some pistols, and then just go and rush B. You know, I really hope so. I mean, if they're going to challenge Mouse Sports on an Inferno, which Mouse Sports have been looking so solid on, on Infernos, on trains, on 
all the regular maps that teams are strong on, if they're going to bring Inferno to the table, a map that requires so much cohesion, so much utility that you and your teammates have to go over before you go in the server, uh, yeah, I hope they have some gimmicky plays that that's going to help get some points on the board for them. Blair, what can Instinct do to take this away from Mouse? They gotta be disruptive. Just to add on to what Potter said, they need to be a little gimmicky, they need to be a little disruptive, and especially, look, I don't know much about their CD side, obviously they need to have a good CD side, but on Inferno, they need to force mouse ports to give them some respect, right? What's gonna happen is we're gonna be seeing Carrigan rushing down mid with all his coordinated flashes and nades and molotovs. Banana's gonna be hotly contested early on, but they need to be composed enough that they don't kinda get run over. You need to at least have like five or six rounds on the T side to make this even possible. For sure, and we talk about composure all the time, and I think it's going to be very important for Instinct. We see the underdog teams coming in, and generally they'll win a pistol here or there. And specifically in these BO1s, pistol rounds are so important, and it's so advantageous for you to be able to rack up some early rounds and create early momentum for yourself. And I think that's definitely what Instinct is going to need to do here. I really want to go into the player comms for Mouse right now, because I've never seen Chris J laugh so much on a LAN. <laughs> that mouse pad is amazing. I need that mouse pad in my life. I can't I kind of wanted to bring it back up on screen so we can actually go through who's on the mouse pad. Is that from a couple of years ago? I didn't that, get yeah, the... Yeah, there, oh, there we go. Here we go. There, is that me? Who is that? Me on the end? That's Majisk, that's Chris J. Does, that, that doesn't simple? look like simple. That does not look like simple. I think it kind of it does. It kind of does. The yeah. hat and it the lips. It looks like a baby, but with a man's face. The luscious lips <laughs> on that mouse pad. I can't <laughs> say I've ever noticed. <laughs> Simple's luscious lips. But Potter, thank you for giving us an insight into what That's you what think of for. Navi's best player. <laughs> the shame they're not here, but it sounds like it will be a distraction for you. And for Blair as well. I know he's a bit of a Simple fan. Who isn't? <laughs> Who isn't, indeed. Now, we have already asked Twitch chat for their predictions. We'll find those out shortly. But before then, I want to come to you first, Blair. Who do you think is going to win this one? No sports. Any reasons why? I'm joking. Uh, no, no. <laughs> it's kind of obvious here. Potter. Definitely Mal sports. Look, I really do want to say a French team because I'm here in Tour and I want to pander to France. Don't sell out. Je l'adore. I love it. I love France. But I have to say, it's got to be Mouse. It's got to be Mouse this time. But what did Twitch chat think? Let's find out. If we got many French people in chat, that's basically going to be the thing that swings it. <laughs> Reasonable. There we go. 82% are saying mouse. Actually, that still could be higher. So Instinct have got some fans Oh, just changed here. right now. Just went oh. from 82. Oh, oh, hello. It's fluctuating. Oh, it's fluctu oh, I like this. I'm enjoying <laughs> my first DreamHack Open. You've got all the tech. Thank you for having me, DreamHack Open. This is very exciting. Can, can we actually like get Instinct to like, you know, I, I know how Twitch ad loves memeing out. So I would love to see it like just go 50-50 all of a sudden. That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, of the French teams here, while we're talking about Instinct, I'm quite curious. Apart from G2, we've got French Frogs, of course, and, and as I mentioned, Instinct. Who do you think is stronger out of Instinct and French Frogs? Oh, that's you know a, what's that's a rough one. Yeah, yeah, what's interesting is, is we've got a lot of intermingling with the rosters and players within the three French teams here. I mean, Omnic and Devo Duvek, who's Devo Duvek, who's on this team here, they, they were always kind of like a duo pair. And then we've got Logan, who used to be on on LDLC and now he's on French Frogs and so a lot of these teams have been have been switching uh, their players so I'm sure they're very familiar with each other. And G2 is lucky actually used to play on that French Frogs roster the X 3D Max and before that the 3D Max lineup. Yeah, so Jax and Lucky going over to G2 from 3D Max. So and this is all very recent within the last year. So it's that French thing. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't want to say stereotype. Is that right? Of, of the French players wanting to play with each other, essentially. We've just had Kiyoshima leave Cloud9, of course. Yeah. So I'm wondering if he's going to go to a French team or if he's more like, he's going to go somewhere in Europe. He likes living in London with his girlfriend. So maybe he's not going to return to a French team anytime soon. Yeah, I, I think for Kyo, he's in a great space where he is a very capable player, obviously, right? And you know, if you look at a French team, sure, you have a G2 in Vitality, but the rest of them are struggling. Like you just mentioned, it's everyone playing with each other in mixes and unknown teams. And if you can speak English that well and you're that good, you have so many more avenues open for you to join any other team, right? So yeah, I don't see Kyo really coming back to this at the moment. And to be honest, I've been surprised that many of the French players haven't really 
d during the dark times of French CS when it was looking really rough, I was surprised no one really went and left France or like the French scene and joined some other team like Kyo did, for example. I would have loved to see maybe a Kenny S or a Shox join some other team and make things a little bit more interesting. And we talk about the French scene and French CS. They've been dominant for so long, but these teams, I mean, LDLC here, Instinct, they're a young team. They're a young group of players, and so they definitely still have a lot of time to, to be able to perform and improve themselves. And this is definitely where they, they're, this is the platform that they need to, to show well, some listen, results. Folks, I love a segue, and I'm about to do one now, because talking of young players, we've got a couple waiting for us in the casting booth. There nice. they are. Le une person. I can't say. Is it June to um, say young? I don't know. Maybe you guys know. I'm not going to speak any French because I don't know any <laughs> French, Frankie. Yeah, but but you, can, you can educate us well, later. I'll, I'll bring you some Celine Dion. You can have a little sing song. And a sip, maybe. Yeah, we'll see what we happens. Are you excited for this matchup, boys? I can't wait, of course. Mal Sports opening up as well, Harry. We love a bit of Carrigan. You know that. Yeah, yeah, no, big fan, big fan. And obviously, you know, we got to see his little stare down. Uh, with, with the camera earlier, so he's feeling pretty confident coming into this. And Chris J using the mouse pad with his own face on, the ego on that man. You know, he's looking a frag, I think. You know what? He did have the good grace to look embarrassed about the fact that he was mouse padding <laughs> his own face. So, are you guys Keeping thinking mouse sports for this one? I think you have to. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, actually, well, me, me and Hugo got to see a lot of Mauers uh, covering the Pro League, right? Yeah. And there they dropped one map throughout the entire thing. So they've been looking very, very good. Obviously, at Sydney, they had some good results. You know, they went out a bit sooner than they would have liked. But uh, for such a new team with so many fresh faces, I think they're making, you know, some real strides in the right direction. So, yeah, I think you have to say Mauers in this matchup, Frankie. Well, now we've heard what you think, we're going to hear you cast. So thank you so much, boys. Let's get to Inferno. Thank you 